In this video, let's talk about contact forms. Specifically, I wanna show you a brand new contact form feature in Thrive Architect and give you four tips for your contact form and your contact page. Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and today we're talking about contact forms. A contact form is a pretty basic element on any website. In most cases, somewhere on your website, you want to give your visitors a chance to get in touch with you. And depending on your business, sometimes that first contact, people sending you a message, can be the first conversion step. It can be the first step in a business relationship. Now, if you're using WordPress and you want a contact form, you have probably encountered contact form seven by far the most popular contact form plugin and one among many for WordPress. But if you've used it, you might've encountered some frustrations as well. So here, you know, here's an example of contact form seven. You can do some quite fancy things with it, but it can also be a bit complicated setup with all these short codes. And in my opinion, the most frustrating thing about it is that let's say you've set up your beautifully designed homepage or contact page or website and now you wanna add a contact form. So you go and add the contact form via the short code that's provided and you insert it, but then it ends up looking like this. And this doesn't exactly blend in with your beautifully designed rest of your website. And then once you go and try and find out, well, how can I customize this? How can I make this look nice? You find out that that's not really easy. This is the problem that we set out to solve with our new contact form element. The idea is that if all you want is just a simple way for people to send you a message, you know, nothing too fancy, just a simple contact form that is now available directly inside Thrive Architect, no additional plugins needed. So here we've got a completely blank page. We've opened up Thrive Architect and we can search for contact form to find this element right here. We can simply drop this on the page and as you're used to with Thrive Architect, almost everything you do is directly on the page front end editable. So first of all, right away you can see this inserts a contact form, which is your basic contact form, ask for a name, email address, message and send message button. So there you go, it's basically what you get with contact form seven as well, except that it already looks a little bit nicer and you can customize various things about this. Because this is kind of the frustration with contact form seven, let's talk first about visual styles. As usual, you can simply click on any element and then style that element. So here I've selected this input field and I can go and let's say make the corners rounded and I can change the color of this border, for example, like this. So right away I've transformed the look of this form and as you can see, we use the group editing feature that you already know from the style list and some other elements. This means that by default, if I'm styling one of these input fields, I'm affecting the look and feel of all of these input fields. And I can unlink that. So if I want one of the fields to look different, I can unlink it. But in most cases, you wanna keep that linked. In most cases, you want these fields to look the same, right? And the same goes for these labels. So you can change things like the font size and the color and so on of these labels simply by clicking on one of them and making the adjustments. And of course, the same goes for the button as well. So that means, for example, very quickly, we can go from the form we have here to one that looks very different. So let's say we have a dark kind of input field type. Maybe we wanna change the text color here as well, and then change the button to some other color as well. Maybe we'll make a ghost button like this. So I make it white and I give it an outline and make that a bit rounded like the fields and make it like this. And then of course, so first of all, let's make it a bit taller and then I would change the text color and also the text size. And then on hover, you can also do hover states for all the elements. So on hover, I would make the text light and the background dark. Now, I've eyeballed this quite a bit. This is basically too big, I need to change that again, but you get the idea. Very quickly, we can go from what was our kind of white default contact form before to rounded corners, dark, totally different look. And the important thing is you don't have to mess with CSS, you don't have to do anything like that 
to make this form match your page. And it's even easier than that, as I'll show you in a bit. First, let me give you four tips for how to create a highly usable, highly functional contact form. Number one, make use of labels and placeholders the right way. A label is this little thing that is on top of an input field. And the placeholder is what shows inside the contact form before you start filling it out. So if we look at a preview of this, you can see that the placeholder is kind of a light gray. Once I click into it, it disappears and then I can enter my own name. So the placeholder is there to provide an example of what you expect your visitor to enter. When you edit the contact form, you will see here on each field, you can edit this and you can choose what field type it is. We have first name, last name, full name, email address, message, phone number, website, and reCAPTCHA. So you can change what this form is. So maybe we wanna do full name and you can change the label. So this is the label, as you can see, it updates right here. And this is the placeholder. And the idea is that the label is descriptive. It says, this is the thing that should go in this field and the placeholder is an example. You can also add new fields here. So let's say we want to add a phone number field. And again, we have the label, which says phone number and an example, which shows what a phone number is and kind of gives an example of what format you expect that phone number to be in. Now, as you can see, the phone number is the last field after the message, which is a bit weird. And we can change that by dragging and dropping the order of the fields in the sidebar right here. On each input field, you can also choose whether this is required field or not. And if you want, you can add required marks so that the visitor can see which fields need to be filled out and which ones are optional. Now, as you can see, when I add these fields, we have already set up the labels and placeholders to be optimal. So you don't really have to do anything unless you're translating it. Or if you wanna inject some personality. So for example, if you have a, let's say a Star Wars fan site, then maybe you would have Obi-Wan Kenobi as the placeholder in your full name field instead of John Doe. So you can use this to inject a bit of humor or a bit of personality, but the principle should always be label plus example. Tip number two, don't ask for information you don't need. So in general, people don't like filling out large forms and the more fields there are, the more you start asking yourself, hold on, why did they want to know all this stuff about me? All I wanna do is ask a question. So while we have enabled a whole bunch of fields that you can add, as you saw here, really think about what are you gonna use this for? And so unless you really wanna call someone on their phone when they contact you, unless this makes sense in your business, then don't ask for someone's phone number. In general, don't ask for information just in case so that you have it later. Be clear about what you want and what you're gonna do with this information and then keep the number of fields in the information you ask for as minimal as possible. Tip number three, make a very clear message after someone submits the form. It's really frustrating when you submit a form online and then you're not sure, well, did this message arrive? What's gonna happen now? I have no idea. In the Thrive Architect contact form element, you have the email and after submit setup. You can click on this and here you can compose two things. First of all, where does the message go? This by default goes to the email address that you have set as your admin email address, but you can change it here. So that's the email inbox that messages that someone has sent will go to. And you can create a subject where you can include fields. So you can say, okay, message from first name and maybe add the user email or the URL where it was submitted. So that's what the subject will look like in your inbox. And you can also add multiple recipients if you want. And the second thing is the after submit action. What happens when someone submits this form? Here, I recommend that you either redirect to a URL. So you redirect to a specific landing page that says your form has been submitted or your message has been sent and here's what's going to happen next, right? Set a clear expectation like, okay, we generally respond within 24 hours or something like that. And also if you say, you know, we will call you by phone within one or two work days, or we will send you an email reply within 24 hours or something. So make it very clear that this thing has happened and what to expect next. Don't leave your visitor hanging. Another thing you can do is without reloading the page, you can compose a message here, again, that says, yes, this has worked, your message has been sent, and here's what to expect next. So whenever you set up a contact form, always go into these settings, make sure everything is just right before you publish that. And finally, tip number four, don't use messages sent through your contact form 
as a marketing opportunity. Make a clear difference on your website between generating leads where people sign up to your mailing list, they sign up to get coupons or promo codes, they sign up to get inform, you know, your latest blog posts, they sign up, they get into your marketing thing by email. That's what opt-in forms and lead generation are for. And the contact form is for people to send you a message and get a reply, no marketing involved. What you can do, if this makes sense in your business, you can end that conversation with saying, hey, would you also be interested to join our mailing list? Would you also be interested, you know, and tell them the incentive, tell them the reason to join, but don't automatically start sending promotional emails to people who sent you a message through the contact form. The expectation there is that we are safe when we use a contact form. We don't want to be bombarded with marketing. And I think out of general respect, we should not do that. And also if you're worried about, you know, GDPR and stuff like that, simply add a message at the bottom or at the top of your contact form saying this information will not be used for any marketing purposes. We will only reply to your message and so on and so forth. Depending on, you know, how deep you want to go, you might want to write a whole article about all the details to make the lawyers happy. But in general, you know, for human beings, you can just add a message saying we will not use this for marketing purposes. All right, so those are my four tips for the right way to use contact forms. Now, let me show you two more things. One of them is a quirk that you should be aware of, which is that if you don't have the form selected, you can drag and drop the fields. So as you can see here, I can drag and drop the fields. And for example, I can create column layouts, even with uneven columns, and I can basically create any layout I want. However, this only works when you have nothing selected. So if I have a field selected and I can't drag and drop anything, and you know, if this is in a background section, if I click outside of it, then I'm selecting the background section, it's inside and I still can't drag and drop anything. So if you've got something selected, you can use this back arrow or the escape key to get back into the mode where you can hover and move things around. Now this is a quirk, we're trying to fix this and we will fix this in a future release, but we didn't wanna delay the, the release of this whole feature just because of this. So for the time being, you can just work around this. Just make sure you get back to the mode where you see the elements in the sidebar, then stuff is drag and droppable. And second, let's get back to this design question because yes, you can click on stuff here and customize it to your heart's content, but there's also an easier way for you to do this. Now, if we go back to our beautifully designed homepage here with the ugly contact form seven form, here's the easier way to do this. Let me get rid of this again. And once again, I'll search for contact form and insert that here. And here I can go to change template. And as you will see, it comes with a whole range of templates, including templates that are generic and will fit anywhere, but also templates that are made specifically for different landing page sets that we have. For example, I'm looking at the Chic homepage and we have a Chic contact form. So if I choose this, it will automatically style this contact form to fit perfectly into this design. No further steps needed. In general, if you're using a landing page set that comes with a homepage template, there's probably a matching design contact form for that page. All right, so that is a tour of the new contact form element available right now in Thrive Architect and a few tips on how to use them, you know, whether you use this or some other contact form solution. I hope you found this useful. Let us know what you think of the contact form feature. And if you have any questions or suggestions, just leave a comment below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.